welcome to Naked Talk with Jess podcast. So excited about today's show. We have Jenna Longoria on today, aka the period guru. She's been on Naked Talk with Jess podcast before. You can find her in episode 22, where she's sharing all about periods, ovulation, and fertility. So I hope you enjoy the show. Be sure that you subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. And you can connect with me on Instagram at Naked Talk with Jess. I would love to hear any questions you have or what who you'd like to see on the podcast. And you can go to NakedTalkWithJess.com. You'll see a little microphone. Just press it and send your question in. Now enjoy the show. All right, we have Jenna Longoria, aka the period guru, and she is going to share with us today about birth control and also some ways that we can get back to regulating our hormones. And that's whether we've been on birth control or if we are coming off of birth control. We've had a lot of questions about this. And so I'm really excited to talk to Jenna. She has been on Naked Talk podcast before, so you can go onto the podcast and check that out. We've had some great conversations so far. So hi, Jenna. Welcome to Naked Talk with Jess podcast. How are you doing? Hi, Jessica. I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you for being here. Um, So can you tell us a little bit about um, what, how you help your clients and just a little bit about your work? Yeah, sure. So um, I am a functional nutritionist and I specialize in hormone health. And what I do is I help women reclaim their hormones by testing, not guessing. So um, in functional medicine, we're always looking for the root cause. So a painful period or acne is a symptom. It's not the root cause. So, you know, a lot of doctors like to prescribe the birth control pill to maybe regulate a period or get rid of hormone hormonal acne, when actually that's just silent, silencing a symptom, not getting to the root cause. So with all of my clients, I do um, comprehensive stool testing, which is a, called a GI map. So we look into their gut health and I do a diagnostic hormone test. So we can also look at their hormones because what I found throughout the years was testing hormones isn't enough. Um, it's only half of the piece of the puzzle. And we need to look at both hormones and the gut because a lot of hormones are actually converted and synthesized in the gut. So if something's wrong with the gut, generally the hormones the hormone health will suffer. Yeah, that's so true. And I've been, I'm sure before that I started my journey to health, looking into things, it's been, gosh, over nine years ago. But when I really started learning that gut and brain connection and that there's so much more than that, it has been just night and day for my family and myself. And actually, you have had a session with one of my daughters. And so I think that's important for us to know, to be informed, right? Make our own decisions. But I'm really passionate about people being informed of all their options and asking questions. And we had to be an advocate for ourselves, but then also for our children. So I agree with you 100% on that. Um, And so what we wanted to talk to you about today, Jenna, is just um, giving a little bit of information for those who don't know about um, birth control or Uh, maybe if they've come off of birth control and so they're having these symptoms, what are some things that we might want to keep in mind? And also what are some things that we can do to get our bodies back to a regulated state as far as the hormones go after birth control? Is there something you can share about that? Yeah, sure. So I think first, it's really important to get definitions clear. And um, there are two things. There's a period and there's a withdrawal bleed. So women who are on birth control pill are having a withdrawal bleed. They're not having a period. And women who are not on hormonal birth control and who are ovulating are having an actual period. So they're completely different things. So when women go on hormonal birth control, it's shutting off all of their hormones and it's getting rid of these chemical messengers within the body that we actually need. They're not just there to get pregnant. So, um, I think, you know, distinguishing the, between those two is very important for how we look at how the hormonal birth control pill or any other form of hormonal birth control works. So second, um, when we are on the birth control pill, it cuts off our communication between the brain and the ovaries, which is why it might not be the best idea to put teenagers on hormonal birth control because they have not yet established that hormone rhythm. So putting them on birth control pill, which is very popular these days, 
60% uh, of women are on birth control pills for reasons other than pregnancy prevention, and a lot of them are teenagers, is, um, you know, they take the birth control pill to get rid of acne or to, you know, um, I'm using air quotes right now, regulate their periods. And it might not be the best decision because it's not getting to the root cause, as I said earlier, as we want to do in functional medicine. We want to we want to get to the root cause, not silence the symptom. So, you know, the period isn't the problem. It's revealing the problem. So why are these issues happening in the first place? And um, also, when a lot of women get off hormonal birth control pill, they experience an umbrella of symptoms that has been labeled post-birth control syndrome. And this can look, um, this can manifest in many different ways, Hashimoto's, hypothyroid, post-pill acne, infertility. There's a lot of, um, you know, digestive upset, IBS. There are a lot of things that this can manifest as. And uh, the withdrawal process from hormonal birth control lasts anywhere from, you know, six months to three years. And it generally peaks at month six. So some women might get off the pill and they're like, oh, I feel fine. This is great. And then at month six, I mean, everything just goes crazy. Um, and that's because your body is detoxing from these synthetic hormones. And it's common to get a surge in androgens, which can cause acne or other PMS symptoms. And um, yeah, it can affect your mood. So it's not a fun process. And it's not something that I recommend and people do DIY like I did, you know, more than a decade ago when I got off hormonal birth control pill because it's much easier if you follow a product, a protocol and, um, you know, detox from the birth control pill and establish that hormonal rhythm. It, it makes things a lot easier. Yes. And so that's something that you do for your clients. If they are in that situation, you kind of can walk them through that and really get to the root cause of what it is. So I know with like a lot of things, right, with our health and, and whether it's fitness or whatever it is, we hear this idea and we think, oh, detox or fitness or do these things, but then we don't have any direction. And that's where the overwhelm can come in or it can do more harm than good. So it's yeah. good to have that direction. Absolutely. And I want to um, emphasize that it's not something you want to DIY. It's not something you want to go online and read what you should do. And it's different. I mean, every single person who is going through this process and everyone that wants to regulate their hormones or get to the root cause of something that's going on should be getting a comprehensive stool test and a diagnostic hormone test. So the blood test you're getting at your doctors, whenever I have patients bring those into me, I don't I, I don't even look at them. They're not going to help me whatsoever. That's just like a snapshot. It's not showing us how your hormones are metabolizing. It's not showing us how you're methylating. It's not showing us how your neurotransmitters are doing. So um, I, I know it's great because sometimes insurance covers those, but they really don't tell us much at all. And the comprehensive stool tests is very important because as I said, you really can't separate gut health from hormone health. And I know a lot of women are like, oh my gosh, but how much money is that? And yada, yada. In the long run, and I get it, you know, we have to prioritize our finances, but in the long run, it will save you money to do the test. So you don't just throw random supplements at yourself that you read online one night and you ordered on Amazon and then you never take again because they didn't work or whatever. In the long run, it's going to save you money. Yes. And I think a lot of us have been there and, and I understand the frustration as well. We spend a lot of money every month on insurance. And unfortunately, a lot of these things are not covered. So we do go the other route and we end up paying. But like you said, it, it's worth it to get to the root cause and not waste money on all these things that are not going to work. They're just going to kind of uh, manage the symptoms to a point. So um, yeah. yes, thank you for sharing that. I think that's a mindset that people have to really address and know that you have to prioritize your health. And unfortunately, until those things are covered, this is a route we have to go. Yeah, it is. And it, that's the healthcare system. I mean, great. Yeah, luckily, like some people have health savings accounts and that's great because people can use, you know, they want, they can use the, their health insurance money for, you know, whichever practitioner or what they want to do. But a lot of insurance, a lot of functional practitioners are out of network. So Yes. Um, okay. Well, um, thank you for sharing all that. I want to take a little bit of time to answer some questions that we've had. And um, this person that left this question, she was on uh, Marina, but she was also on a low dose progestin. And um, she just saying that she's had um, extreme exhaustion since coming off of that. So she was on two forms of birth control at once. So let me, I'll read you um, her question. And she okay. said she's had extreme exhaustion, not sure if it's hormone related. 
and she had a long and heavy withdrawal bleed, but now she's had a, she said a period, but you just told us it really is not a period. It's that bleed almost every day since October 30th. And she's only been off a few days in the whole month. So she's worried she might be anemic. Um, so she's wondering if her body isn't producing progesterone since she was also on a low dose progestin with the Marina. Wow. So first of all, um, that's ridiculous that she was on two forms of birth control pill and whatever doctor prescribed that shame on them. Um, that's, um, but this podcast is not about that. Um, so she could have been ovulating. First of all, the Marina low dose progestion, which I'm so happy that you called it progestion because some doctors will call it progesterone only pill and it's not progestion and progesterone are completely different. Um, compounds. So uh, on the Marina, the first year, 15% of women will ovulate and the second year, 85% of women will ovulate. So I don't know if she fell in that spectrum. And if she was ovulating, it would be impossible for me to know without knowing her history. Um, So if she was ovulating, then she could have been making progesterone or uh, maybe she wasn't ovulating. In that case, she wasn't making progesterone or she could have been ovulating and been under a lot of stress and still been low in progesterone. So, you know, there's no way to know unless I test her hormones. Um, The fact that she had it taken out and then she's been bleeding ever since, she definitely needs to go get that um, investigated because her body is telling her that there's something wrong. So I would definitely go get uh, your diagnostic testing and see, because I can't guess if you have low progesterone based on your symptoms as much as I'd like to, that's, it doesn't work that way. And those quizzes online that are trying to predict what hormone you're deficient in, they're great for pointing you in the right direction, but it's impossible to um, diagnose with a quiz. So um, yeah, and the anemic part, if you're bleeding a lot, then definitely that's something that you want to be, uh, you want to keep tabs on. So getting a ferritin, a serum ferritin test, which is the test that you really want to see because it's showing the bioavailable uh, iron in your body, something like that. You can buy wholesale direct for like $18. If you just go online to like Ultra Labs or something like that, it's $18 for a serum, a serum ferritin test, super affordable, and it can show you your levels. You want them to be um, at least over 50. I really like to see it 60s through 90. And if it's not there, then yeah, you are anemic and you need to restore your iron. So something that um, someone could do naturally like that is just take some beef liver capsules from Vital Farms um, or eat beef liver and kind of, you know, beets are high in iron and do things like that to uh, restore the iron levels, but definitely investigating why that period is happening every day like this. Yes. Um, thank you for that. And I'll make sure that we get all your information at the end. So people listening can reach out to you. And if you can't help them, I know that it's you You can definitely lead them in the right direction. Yeah. Um, okay. And then let's see there. As someone else is saying, um, they want to know when it's time to address a low progesterone post birth control. Um, they think that it, their issues might be because of low progesterone Mm-hmm. They've all, she's always tended to be estrogen dominant, but, and, um, she, she said she thinks being on birth control likely stopped her body from producing progesterone. Um, she's not sure if she should do a cream or something while her body regulates. Mm-hmm. Um, cause she said she just obviously knows something's wrong. Okay. So definitely listening to intuition is great. You know, listening to your intuition, if you know something is off, however, your intuition can't tell you what your hormones are doing. So getting a diagnostic test, seeing exactly what shows with your progesterone, your estrogen, and then you can know what to do. So I would not use any type of progesterone cream until you know what's going on with your hormones. And, um, you know, there are two types of estrogen dominance. There's frank and relative. So with frank estrogen dominance, you have more estrogen in the body. Uh, like you have too much estrogen in the body and you have low progesterone with relative. It's when you could have normal levels of estrogen, but your progesterone is low. So you want a, a, a ratio of estrogen to progesterone. It's like 30 to one. So, you, um, 30, uh, 30 to one. So you can have you can have estrogen dominance without having too much estrogen. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And this is so fascinating. And it's, it's like a lot of different things that I'm sure you talk about as well, but I talk about is just being informed and really getting, 
having that information, it just helps us to make such better decisions for our body and our health and be our own advocate. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, playing around with progesterone creams and supplements that um, can manipulate your hormone levels is just something that I don't advocate for unless you have um, quantifiable (laughs) proof of what your hormones are doing. And I just want to say quickly, just going about a little bit of my experience, it's been about two years ago, so I'm 42, and I think something to be aware of is, and once again, on the podcast, I don't say to something's right or wrong, I just say, I want you to be informed to make your own decisions, but let's just face it, you know, people are very quick if they're selling something to say, hey, yeah, you should take it. Um, I know a lot of times for the cream, they'll say, oh, just do this cream, and I was on um, bioidentical uh, the hormone pellets. And mm, yeah. looking back, they, I did not need it. Um, I had so yeah. many symptoms from that. My back broke out where I've never had that before. And then they said, well, take, oh, we forgot to tell you to take DEM. It's a, a DEM. Yeah. That didn't help. I was bloated. Um, I just, it just was too high of a dose. Um, and so I've been very, just very, um, you know, hesitant to just do things when people say that I want to know why and they didn't do the testing that you're talking about either to get that full picture. So I just want to let people know if you're thinking about that. And I tell my girls this, you know, I tell I try to tell everyone this, if someone's marketing something, who's benefiting, you know, where did the research come from? And just take those extra steps to look into the information to make your best decision. But yeah. yes, I, when you said that about the cream, that's a, one of the first things people say, oh, just do the cream. It's it's not as, a, you know, it's better and this and that, but are you getting the full picture of what you're doing the cream or if you should even have that? Yeah, exactly. And this is my thing too. It's like a lot of people, um, and that was a great, you know, a story to share because you're right. You know, you've got to listen to your body and you've also, you know, you have to be a little skeptical of what people are trying to sell and their motives behind it. And, um, also their knowledge to be giving advice in the first place is really big one. Um, but, Looking at sex hormones and just putting progesterone cream on something or putting a testosterone pellet or an estrogen pellet in something is very similar to someone going on hormonal birth control pill to get to silence their symptoms. Because if there is a progesterone or a testosterone deficiency, and then you just straight go to a, a clinic and all of them now do it, have pellets. And by the way, these doctors that are putting these pellets in can go to a 72 hour weekend workshop and train on how to do pellets. They have no idea about hormones whatsoever. Um, so just think about that 72 hour workshop. <laughs> so yeah, just if you're an MD, you can go to a workshop and learn how to do bioidentical hormones in 72 hours where I've like, I've spent five years of my life learning them, but I'm not an MD, but I know so much more than they do. So that's where it's a little frustrating. Um, no one can learn anything in 72 hours. So here's the thing with, um, with if you just, if you just jump going back to what I was saying, you know, if you have a progesterone deficiency or testosterone, testosterone deficiency, and you're like, all right, that's it. I'm going to that, you know, plastic surgery clinic down the street. They do pellets. I'm going to go get some, that's going to fix my problem. That's just silencing the symptom because what you really want to ask. And as a functional practitioner, I'm asking why, are you deficient in progesterone? Why are you deficient in testosterone? Let's get to the root cause so your body can make these things naturally. And so you don't need these artificial, um, you know, replacements. Yeah, I think um, that's, that's so important. And something that I've faced along my journey as well is, you know, we think, oh, someone's a doctor and they know everything. And they do know a lot, probably in their specialty, but kind of like, food and nutrition, you know, they get a very, very short part of that schooling. So it's not that it's necessarily, you know, oh, doctors are bad and this and that. No, there's a, there's a place for that. And it's really good, but they're just not getting the, the right school, the, I'm sorry, not the right schooling, but the amount of schooling that someone who specializes in this gets. And I, I think it's important just to ask those questions and to go to someone who really specializes in these different things, because this is our health we're talking about. Yeah, um, this I'm I'm meeting so many people in their 30s who want children and they're having a hard time. And I know you're great with this as well, but um, with be- becoming pregnant and they just thought, oh, well, I've, I've been on the birth control pill since I was a teen and I'm just going to get off and then get pregnant. Right. Within, you know, a couple of months. Yeah. And that's just not yeah. 
it's not. No, it's, and it's really sad to see that. And, you know, research has shown that it takes an average of nine cycles to start ovulating again after getting off the birth control pill. And that doesn't mean nine months. That can mean two years. Yes. You're assuming that someone is, you know, having a menstrual uh, a period the month that they get off the birth control pill. And that doesn't happen for a lot of women. A lot of women have post amenorrhea and they don't start menstruating again for like a year. Wow. Yeah. And, and I think it's the, the sooner we can get this information to people, the better, because at least they can make an informed decision and be aware of those things um, when they do want to, you know, perhaps start trying. And speaking of that, so someone else asked a question. They said, um, they're one, so they're off the birth control. Um, this one's Marina as well. And they're really wanting to um, get pregnant again. She's, she has children, but she is 33 and she's really wanting to get pregnant. So she's wanting to see, I guess this will kind of go back to the other things that you said, um, what to do with that, because she is having a lot of breakthrough, would you call it breakthrough bleeding? Is that what you mm-hmm. called it? Uh, um, yeah, withdraw bleeding. Yeah. Sorry, withdraw bleeding, a lot of that. And it's not, um, it's it's for most of the month and she only has a few days without the breakthrough bleeding. So she's concerned about that. So I'm thinking the same thing you would, you would refer her to have, um, or I guess what, what would her first steps be as well? So she's off the Marina. Yes. For how long has she been off of it? Did she say? Um, let me see. Um, because if she's, if she's been off of it for a while, she, you know, generally when you get off the birth control pill, you'll have a first bleed, you know, and that's a withdrawal bleed, but the bleeds after that will be most likely ovulatory bleeds. Okay. So that's it's been a asked. few months. Um, I don't know the exact date and I can yeah. always go back and ask, but so. So she could um, be having a real period. That, I mean, okay. that's a possibility, but the fact that she's having a, such a long bleed, is not normal. So, And so what would you suggest as far as, because we talked about in our other episode, we talked about ovulation being the fifth vital sign. Mm-hmm. So is that something, what would you suggest as far as her figuring out her ovulation? And you are always such a great guest. And I'm going to, I definitely want you on again about the whole cycle syncing and that as well, because as we're talking about birth control, for those who are wanting to get on it for to prevent pregnancy, I'd love for you to come back on and share, hey, there's some other options as well. Um, so maybe you can talk yeah, about absolutely. that next time. But what would you suggest for someone saying they're getting off birth control and they're wanting to start figuring out their ovulation? Um, what would you suggest to them? Yeah, so definitely starting to track your cycles. And you can do this. My favorite device is the temp drop for tracking your cycles and for using it as a fertility awareness method. And what you're doing is you're identifying your fertility window by pinpointing when you're ovulating. And you're doing this by tracking your fertility uh, with three symptoms, uh, three um, fertility signs. And that is temperature, cervical fluid, and cervical position. Um, you don't necessarily have to do cervical position, but temperature and observing cervical fluid is very important. The temp drop is a device that you put around your arm at night and it takes your average temperature. So you don't have to wake up first thing in the morning and take your temperature. So this is really handy for women who, you know, maybe get up at different times of the night, that the day, um, that maybe have small children and they're having to get up or maybe, you know, they go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, it's giving you a consistent temperature range. Um, And then tracking that. So, you know, charting your cycles is the best place to start because it's really hard when you don't know what's going on. And if you go to your practitioner and you want help, they want to know the history of your menstrual. I know I do. I want to know the history of my client's menstrual cycles. And it really helps me if they've already been charting their cycles. Um, That will tell us a lot because, you know, our period is our fifth vital sign. It's a barometer, a barometer of our overall health. So it can show me like if someone has a short cycle, then it points me in the right direction of what could be going on. If someone has low temperature readings, that might signify a thyroid issue. Um, If someone has a short luteal phase, like maybe they shouldn't be getting pregnant yet. So with all my clients, I like them to be having a minimum of 11 day luteal phase before they even start trying to conceive. Because if their luteal phase is fewer than 11 days, it's a very high chance of miscarriage. So you really want to be making sure that your menstrual cycle is healthy and your luteal phase is long. Luteal phase is post-ovulation. 
So those approximate 14 days post ovulation. Um, so that was, it's definitely where I start tracking your cycles um, and replenishing nutrient stores because you will be deficient and um, a variety of nutrients such as zinc, B12, magnesium, D3, iodine, and selenium after you get off hormonal birth control pill. Most likely will have leaky gut as well. So you need to you know, repair the gut, restore the gut lining so you can absorb the nutrients from your food. Support your detox pathways is really important by supporting your liver. You can do this. Um, there are a lot of different things you can use to do that, you know, like um, eating broccoli sprouts is a great one. Uh, dandelion root tea, glutathione are all great things. Or doing a cleanse. Like I have a 20 day hormone reboot, which is designed for women getting off the birth control pill. Um, and rebuilding your gut, I think I just said that, you know, because of the leaky gut and nourishing your thyroid. So most women that I see getting off um, birth control pill, they all have subclinical hypo hypothyroid. And that's because the pill um, binds to your thyroid hormone and it makes it really difficult to, to convert your T4 to T3. So most women getting off the pill have some type of hypothyroid. Wow. And when is, um, and I'll share on um, the link for that, but when is that hormone reboot? Is that something that they can access anytime or do you have one starting anytime soon? Oh yeah, no, it's anytime. So, okay. you know, it's an individual self-paced program and they can just go to my site. And, um, this is more for women who are looking for a reboot. It's not, it's, okay. you know, something that it, they might want to like open up their detox pathways. I have my, um, my clients who just get off birth control pill to do this before we put them on a protocol, okay. um, depending on what their hormone levels are saying it's, but it's not, it's not going to get, if there's a more, as much as I love the hormone reboot, it's kind of better for clients that have already undergone my program and we've done the testing and they just want to keep their body running smoothly. Like maybe they'll do it once or twice a year, just kind of for a reboot. Um, if you have all these big problems, a, a 20 day detox is not going to solve those. And if anyone tells you it is and run the other way, cause they're lying. Yes. You can't, you can't yes. fix things like that in 20 days. But. No, because it didn't get there in 20 days, right? It took a <laughs> no. long time. Like, but I, I feel like I'm currently doing my 20-day reboot right now. Actually, today's day one because I like to do it in the fall and I like to do it in the spring just to keep, oh. my, you know, just to keep my detox pathways open and um, keep everything balanced. I find it's like maintenance. You know, like you bring your car in for an oil change, you should do the same thing for your body. Yes, for sure. And um, I'd also like you, um, when you come back on, we talk about um, more of that, um, the fertility and to talk about the cycle syncing, because I know for me, I'm 42 and I just started learning about the different um, phases of the cycle. When you mentioned the luteal phase, I think that's something that would be good for you to come back and talk about. And there's so much that goes along with that as well. Um, I think that would be some good stuff. And so what I want to do is let us know where we can find you and then I'll put your information in the show notes as well. So if you're listening, you can go to nakedtalkwithjess.com and where or wherever you listen to the podcast and you'll see this, these links. But where can we find you to learn all this cool stuff, Jenna? Yeah, awesome. Well, you can check me out. Um, my website is my name, Jenna Longoria. That's J-E-N-N-A Longoria, L-O-N-G-O-R-I-A.com. And I have a lot of free resources on there. I have a period 101 ebook that you can download for free. And I have a fertility awareness method guide you can download for free. So those are great uh, places to kind of get some great tips about your period. And like, you know, a lot of women have it like, what is a normal period? How, you know, what should it look like? What can I do to get a normal period and regulate my period? Um, and the fertility awareness guide is great for what we were just talking about charting recycles it kind of sets you up on how to start doing that and implementing that okay great and then on um instagram and facebook oh what? yeah so connect yeah. with me on instagram um i i post there daily and i'd love to hear from you i'm at jenna longoria health yes and then you have a facebook group as well that i'm part of have you have a lot of great information oh thank you there. yeah the period guru hormone community Yes, period guru. <laughs> I've learned so much from you and having three daughters is just a really great thing for even if you're if you don't need it or even if you aren't um needing that and you know someone else or you have children, it's important to start the talking to them early so they're understanding their bodies and you know, we're all about shedding shame about around our bodies on here. And I think the more informed we are, the better decisions we can make and we feel more empowered um about our bodies. So 
thank you so much, Jenna, for joining us. And I look forward to having you back. And if y'all need to reach out to her, you can find her at JennaLingoria.com and connect with her. She knows her stuff. She's really good. So thank you so much. All right. We'll, we'll have you on soon. I would love that. All right. Bye. Bye. I always love having Jenna on the podcast. She has such great information to share. And just through my own journey, I've I've shared before that I just started learning about my body really at 40, even though I've had three children, there were so many things I didn't know. Um, I share in the Love Your Labia series that there's all kinds of stuff going on in our body that are wonderful and amazing. It's not all just a vagina down there, y'all. There's a vulva, a clitoris, your labia, all these great pieces of our body that we want to learn about. And when we know about them, we can be empowered to make better decisions. And I always want you to be informed and to be an advocate for your health. And if you're a parent, it's never too early to begin that conversation about our bodies and the wonderful things that they are with our children. So we'll have her back on soon. Thank you so much for listening to Naked Talk with Jess podcast. And you can find me on Instagram at Naked Talk with Jess, or you can go to nakedtalkwithjess.com and you can record your questions. I want to hear what you want to know about on the show so we can share it. When you go there, there's a little microphone and you just can record your voice question and hopefully we'll get to that and we'll get to play it on the show. So stay tuned and I can't wait to talk to you again on Naked Talk with Jess.